Hello everyone, uh, my name is James and uh, I'm a software engineer in uh, Bay, uh, San Francisco Bay and uh, I play poker in my spare time uh, mostly online in, in some like private games and uh, we're playing deep stack um, I play some tournaments as well uh, but not so much and um, I'm a member of Upswing uh, Poker um, and training and I'm definitely a huge fan uh, of Dog Poke um, so today uh, is actually my first try, uh, you know, talking about my, uh, the, one of the recent live games I played uh, in Bay 1-1, uh, so it's kind of a local casino here, um, so kind of my first time talking to the camera and, you know, trying to uh, talk through some hands, uh, so I actually post in the group, um, we have a, a, you know, a Facebook group of like upswing members, um, and, and had a very good session. This is like a show off post of how much I won. Like uh, this is actually before my last two hands. Actually, my last two hands, I, I remember um, I was winning like another 3K on top of that. So like uh, I end up you know, the session with like up to, uh, 12, around 12K uh, playing. It's like two, three, five, ten, 10 uh, mandatory straddle. So it's more of like it's more similar to a five ten, but we are playing deep. Uh, most people buying for two thousand, so two hundred big blinds deep. Uh, just kind of keeping that in mind uh, when when that affects my play. Uh, so today I want to talk about few hands, and uh, I def it's definitely uh, like one the best session I've ever had in my uh, entire life. That you know, uh, kind of running so good, but I also feel like. I play uh, relatively well uh, throughout the session, so uh, there are a couple of, like interesting hands, and I want to talk about like how I approach, um, you know, live poker, especially when, you know, I uh, usually I try to uh, think of like the serial base, but also like how to make adjustments like against live uh, play a field, but not making like over adjustments. Um, uh, so uh, let's go through like a couple hands and uh, I'm gonna use like poker snowy so uh, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, you know what kind of a decision uh, poker snowy would take uh, especially in those like multi way pots because I do have uh, GTO plus but like uh, it, it only analyze your range and like I think in, you know it doesn't make too much sense when uh, in live poker like people's range you know vary from so much so that you know i think it's better that we kind of use poker snowy and like uh, just just use that as a hand uh visualizer but also like it's kind of interesting to see what the decision would be uh for uh you know for the ai to take so um i think first hand um we do have uh i don't know what i put here I think we definitely have a hand here. Okay, uh, let's let's actually create a new scenario, right? So, uh, this one. Okay, so this one. Um, this is like the first big hand we played. Um, you know, in in that session. So, um, a donkey. Uh, I suppose. Um, you know, I I would call him a donkey because uh, I I think he definitely plays a bit spewy. Um in the sense like playing a wide range but I, I i don't actually have a very swift read usually i don't make uh, over adjustments just be, be you know based on like overall impression of the person like i wouldn't you know some people like players i i find them like making a lot of adjustments like over generalizing the field like they were like oh you should never bluff them or like you, you were like they were like oh this guy bluffs so uh, this guy likes bluffing and he over bluffs. I, I don't you don't usually like make a, that kind of a uh, like generalization, right? Because like uh, even if a person is say he's like stationary, but like uh, he's like station, um, uh, but then uh, when they are taking are taking certain lines, for example, like checking out of position twice, uh, their range could be quite weak there. So even if uh, they call very light, we can attack. Uh, very frequently, right? So uh, also say a person um, over bluffs. Uh, you know, in live player field, like that rarely exists, but like 
Um, but let's say like a person, um, a player over blocks, but like when they are taking certain lines, uh, for example, like when, when they check uh, the flop and bet the turn and check the river, uh, other than in the bad river, like it's really a bluff. Like it's, you know, I in, I tend to pay attention to their showdowns and like certain lines, but uh, rather than like overgeneralizing what they are doing and like what's a player style because like even bad players they they have very very different styles like which would surprise you in many different ways. Uh, so let's get you into this hand uh, I played. Uh, so I have pocket jacks. I'm I'm on on the straddle. I don't think this software uh, supports like straddle, so I would just like pretend it's big blind. Um, so, uh, so this guy uh, who is a junkie who actually raises like eighty uh, from under the gun plus two. You know, I figure he might have a wide range there, but when they raise that big, uh, it sort of indicates uh, like being polarized, right? So. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm closing the action, so like I think that's one of the reasons I decided to call there uh, instead of three betting. Uh, a lot of people say like against the bigger size that, you know, um, uh, we, we tend to counter three bet more and like three bet or fold. Uh, I do agree that we should definitely fold a ton against that race size, but like uh, it, this is like our first hand, so uh, we're gonna just call like and evaluate. Uh, actually, Poker Snowy indicates here like against like a you know a good supposed to be a good player. Uh, we we should call you know the call, the EV and of call and raise are, like very close. So uh, the flop came like queen eight nine, uh, two hot uh, and and queen club. I don't think we have too much of a mirror of like betting here, especially when we're playing deep. I think we definitely should. Uh, Protect our checking range, especially out of position against a, you know, a spewy player, uh, and also like they could have a lot of like, hands there. They could have eight nine, queen nine, uh, even queen eight against a, a, a and, and like a lot of queens there. Um, so uh, we check the flop, especially when we have like jack of heart, right? So we kind of blocks, um, the hands that we beat, and they're gonna call one street. Uh, for example, like they have some flush draws there, straight draw there. So uh, definitely check there, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like, you can see like the EV is actually very close, but like leaning towards the checking. And then, uh, so the donkey actually bets like 120. We, so we have a gasha and we have back draw, flush draw, and we have a pair. Uh, so a pretty good situation there. We, we're gonna call this and um, and then uh, turn it into a queen of space. So um, definitely like a dry con to have. Uh, so uh, we, we check and they, they check. We expect them to bet a queen a lot of the time. Uh, if When you're looking at like live player field, like they worry so much about, you know, protecting the hand, especially like when there was flush draw there. So at this point, like, I'm very confident, like I have the best hand, right? So, um, and here actually like, so let me actually copy the scenario here. Um, so in the, on the river, I think it's a town of diamond. So it's a town of diamond. And uh, this is a spot where uh, I usually best more uh, when it's ca one cost straight, uh, you know, two, four to a straight. So um, because uh, you want to give them a top spot where, um, where like they don't know what to do with their you know uh, with, with their trips or like in some cases too pure uh, for example like they, they have uh you know they, uh or like let's say they have ace tender uh you know somehow bet the flop or like you know they have some eight some nine uh th those probably would be very loose calls but like uh, kind of putting their trips like let's say like you bet pot sides there then uh, they actually have a very easy decision with their, a lot of their queens, right? So uh, we bet like very small, like 175, uh, less than half the pot. Uh, actually, we can go even a bit smaller. Uh, I think um, kind of Poker Snowy advocates a quarter, quarter um, pot bet, but like, you know, in line poker, people would always pay you offline. So um, we actually end up like betting 175. And uh, this is like such a weird spot. Like, 
the villain actually raises to a hundred. Um, so that's around like pot size bet, right? Like a pot size raise. And this is like definitely, uh, you know, a top spot for me. Usually like in line poker, uh, you should take river aggression like very seriously, like, right? Wait, so, um, especially when they uh, race against, uh, you know, against a bet, like when um, they were so passive, like most of the time, and then like suddenly they show aggression, most likely they have a strong hand. But we also don't want to overflow, like, but we also don't want to overflow in this case, because like, um, a lot of these players, uh, uh, when I'm saying like, we shouldn't overflow, it's not like, oh, they bluff sometimes, like they definitely don't bluff enough. Uh, but like they can overvalue their hand, right? So in this case, I think about it. Uh, uh, I think they, they could be playing um, a Jack, you know, some like a Jack 10, Jack 8, Jack 9, uh, you know, or Queen Jack the same way. Uh, and, you know, they feel like they have a good hand. They, they have like, you know, they have a straight there, so they should raise which uh, probably they really shouldn't unless they have king jack at least. Um, so I, I sort of not happy with the situation there, but considering like they could be overvaluing some hands, they could even be overvaluing some queen there, like ace queen some of the time, I don't really know. So like without a specific read, uh, I'm just gonna call there. And actually they showed up, he showed up with like six, seven off. So, uh, it is a little bummer, like, you know, somehow, like, he figured, like, his lower end straight gets there, and, like, that's, that, and that's pretty good. So, uh, we end up taking this, like, um, two sound dollar pot, which is quite nice, uh, kind of beginning, uh, having a good start with the session. Um, and then we, uh, okay, so this is the first hand I play in this session, right? So, uh, let's just copy this narrow in, so that's either, um, just copy this. And, uh, I think at this time, uh, we are at C under the gun plus two. So, um, uh, we have coins, um, which is a pretty good hand. Uh, of course, we're gonna, we're gonna open that. Um, we open to 65. Oh, uh, I think in this case, yeah, it's a little weird because, um, um, okay, that's, that's actually, because it's a uh, double straddle pop. So um, it's actually a 1020. Let's make it 1020. Sorry, I'm like too lazy of like making, uh, like editing videos or like making the hands, etc. It just takes so much time. So I'm just gonna start with like, you know, uh, typing on the fly and using the software. Uh, if, if you know I have time later, you know we, we can. If like this channel gets popular or something, then we can always do better. Um, so uh, early position, uh, race, uh, you know, early position we raises uh, queens. We have uh, let's assume like queen of hearts, queen of spade. I think we have like around three thousand dollars, and then. Um, but then uh, we, we actually cover most of the balance, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, we open 65, uh, which is like pretty much standard uh, our own size. Um, so uh, low jack folds, uh, high jack, actually the same donkey. Uh, he, he probably like, as you can see, like he plays like six, seven off like uh, from early position. So he probably like play very speedy. Uh, so he caught uh, and then uh, button folds, a small blind, uh, a wreck. I think uh, she, she's like a kind of a wreck in this game, uh, somewhat okay, uh, but more of like ABC style, uh, not like too, too creative here. Um, uh, and she three best to 180. Uh, uh, big blind folds, uh, now it's decision on me. Uh, it's kind of a tricky spot because like, I don't really want to play a pot against like two players with this hand, but like, but at the same time, like, 
uh, a live when a live rag like three bets from small blind against like early position open like it's so strong. Uh, so I still end up like and we're so, playing so deep here that like I don't really want to like get five bet uh, from the rag here. Um, if I did do decide to three bet uh four bet, so I end up calling here. Um, and uh, of course the the donkey also called. So the pot actually gets really big uh, at this point. And so the flop was, um, okay, so Jack Hunt and Tim Diamond and uh, Eight of Hunt. Wait, what's going on here? Okay, here. So it's Jack of Hunt, Tim Diamond and Eight of Hunt. So, um, uh, small blind checks. Uh, actually, in at this point, you know, we we can you know from a theory perspective, I think we can definitely check here, because uh, we are our position, and uh, both players should have should have strong range. Um, but first, like as I said, like the donkey could have a lot of bad hands, right? So they could have like some random eight nine, you know, a, a king jack queen jack off. And, and you know a lot of hands that we beat uh and like they can have some like random nines or sevens as well so we definitely want to ch and like a lot of flush draws so we definitely want to charge the hands um uh especially like with 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 queens uh we do want to kind of protect our hand against like two players um at this point actually like when so as i mentioned like i think small blind was is a um, you know a ABC player. So when they check here, I expect them not having aces, kings, or queens, which is like the only one has one combo, uh, or jacks that often. Um, because like people are so scared of like getting sucked out, uh, especially against two players. So like they they would just almost never slow play those hands. Actually, like even if uh, even it's like myself uh, in live poker, I don't find too many mirror of like slow playing those hands, especially on this kind of dynamic boards because like people are not bluffing enough that you wouldn't make more money by checking, right? Because the the benefit of checking is that first like you sort of like protect your range, uh, which doesn't exist in like against bad players, uh, like which which shouldn't exist, right? So uh, another reason is to um, actually looking at the spa here and you know sort of like be buff catching and you know win money from buffing right but then against bad players they're just gonna call you anyway right they have worse hands to call you anyway uh, and also at the same time they are not bluffing enough right so uh, you know we, we definitely need towards like better um, uh, it doesn't have to be too big since uh, it's like multi way so we, we bet like 400 there. Uh, look at, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like you see, uh, Poker Shinoi actually, uh, I think it's also because of the stack size, it advocates of like betting small, uh, but it, the EV difference isn't too big there. So like, let's just ignore that. Um, so play eight, uh, so it, which is the donkey, right? So he calls, uh, and the player two calls as well. So at that time, I think I was expecting that I was expecting that uh, a small blind has ace king or ace queen a lot of time. Uh, so they have a gut shot. They might have a backdoor flush draw, where um, of course, like we we brought queen of hearts, so they cannot have ace queen of hearts. Um, so and I, if they have ace queen of hearts, ace king of hearts, I expect them to bet the flop like a lot of times anyway. Uh, so I expect them to have a uh, small blind to have ace queen, ace king a lot of time, especially ace king, uh, having two overcards and got shot to the not straight. Uh, maybe with ace of heart. Uh, that that's my read. So uh, and the turn was uh, four of diamond. Okay, the turn was four of diamond. So um, small blind checks again. So pretty much a break, right? So pretty much a break. Uh, I actually end up checking here. I think both are fine. Um, against a good player, I actually like 
checking a lot better uh, because like what kind of worst hand would call you um, I don't think a good player gonna gonna call you with like let's say ace jack or king jack suited um, but then at the same time I guess a bla bad player they're gonna call you right so a lot of worst hand can call you and also like uh, I expect them to not slow play jacks or tens a lot of time. First, like this player like plays beauty, right? So uh he would definitely like three bets like tens or jacks a lot of the time uh pre flop right? So um so and also like he, he seems to be a, a bit reluctant like when he called the pre. So I expect him not and also like um and also on the flop, he, he just flat calls, right? I expect them to, that's that's where a lot of live players are so in balance, right? So they're gonna call with a lot of their draws and like marginal hands, while at the same time, uh, they never still play their two pair or, or straight or sets, especially on wet balls, right? So when they get to the turn, a lot of times they just have uh, one pair hand, right? You, they just have, uh, one pair hand and like the four of diamond should really not connect with them. So uh, We end up checking here, uh, which is you know, you see if if you look at the poker snowy It's actually the correct play, but now I think of it. Uh, I like Betting a, a bit better. Um, I think at the time uh, another mirror uh, another, you know, kind of thing uh, like Kind of thinking a lot, lot, lot there. Um, uh, another thing I'm worried about is, uh, you know, small blind could still have some strong hands that they could be slow playing, right? I don't, I don't expect her to play aces, kings, queens that way, but they can play like jacks that way, uh, or even tens like some of the time. So I'm a little worried about like small blind there when when they actually call you know, uh, in a three-way pot uh, on the flop. So, you know, they could have jack there, they could have a very strong hand. So if like the donkey bets, uh, and uh, I think this person actually has more. Um, they have like some more like vicinity of like two or something left. So if like donkey bets and the small blind shoves, I'm definitely folding. Right, I'm definitely folding. So it, it would get, in, in that sense, like we would have more information by checking there and, and you know, and not worrying too much about like balancing on range. I, I don't think that's a major concern here. So um, play eight, the donkey there, actually James. So, um, so small blind folds. So now it's like kind of decision on us, right? So based on a lot of analysis we already did, they should really have jacked. They have. They should really, really have like you know jacks, tens, eights, uh, or like straight, uh, because like they not gonna slow play that often, uh, and four diamond really shouldn't change that much. So uh, we end up calling, and they showed us like eight six of diamond. So uh, they have bottom pair and backdoor flush draw, on the flop, and you know. Um, and on the turn, they, they, they picked up the flush draw and they just decided to go with it. Uh, that, that's like the biggest problem of live players, right? So what are you really representing if you, uh, you know, you never slow play your sets or straights or, you know, two, play, two pair plus on the flop, right? While you are actually, you know, betting the turn here. Uh, it's kind of, it's also kind of very loose for him to have the hand there, not just pre-flop, but also on the flop. Um, Cause like you're gonna under realize your equity um, very often uh, when it gets to the later streets. So that's the second hand we played. Um, let's see. Um, so we're gonna go back to the five ten scenario there and um, copy this. Okay, so, um, okay, we're gonna fold this and fold. Now this time we are in the low jack. Um, 
we have um actually we did a very loose open here um we have uh jack of heart and uh, we have jack 10 off right so um i think at this time we have around around 5k um but we, we, we have the villain coverage so uh, not too big a deal there uh it's definitely a loose open but like against a passive player field i think it's you know some okay somewhat okay especially like when the rake is not really a significant factor compared to like you're playing two three five or something or like even one two three you should play much higher because the rake is higher uh so um hijack folds uh wait uh what's going on here okay two uh, cards. Uh, we we raise this to um player seven, player six, fold, and yeah, we uh, you know poker snowy would definitely fold. <laughs> it's no way like even hijack I mean, probably like would fold. Um, so wait, uh, I think I went wrong uh here. Actually, we are in the hijack. The hijack. Sorry, sorry guys. Um, we're actually in the hijack and we have Jack of Hearts and Ten of Spade. Um, so uh, here like we open thirty five dollars. Uh, we open thirty five dollars and uh, you know, cut off votes. Uh, but then the donkey, uh, the the same donkey actually costs. So uh, they could have like a very wide range here and you know, the blinds fold. So we go heads up with the, uh, to, to the flop. Uh, and you know, keep in mind, like w even though we do have a very, you know, big skill edge there, but like when you play out of position, uh, your, your skill ag edge actually gets minimized, right? So like you should do a lot of checking there, like not try too hard, like outplaying your opponent. Uh, so we, we check there with our middle pair, which is pretty standard, uh, and they, they check as well. And the turn with the seven of heart, right? Re which really shouldn't change that much, uh, except like a nine, 10 gets through, and a seven, eight, 10, two pair. Uh, so we actually checked again, uh, you know, against a very bad player, like if they are very stationed, uh, and, and they call all sorts of hands, like, you could find, I, I think the, the hand is just simply too weak to bet there, especially out of position. In position, we can make a case. Um, but to, to be honest, like I think we should check um, a lot of time. Um, yeah, we do, we do a lot of checking here. Um, the river is three of diamonds, so which is essentially a break, right? So uh, I think it's, we have a very clear bet there because like, um, they could have a lot of worse jacks and they have some eights, some sevens, or even some pocket pairs that they, they might call us. Um, so we bet more of like uh, around half pot, so it's like $45. Um, and what's kind of interesting when we get to the river is that when, um, when the dealer actually dealt the three of diamond, and they immediately checked. Uh, they said ch they checked out of the turn. Uh, at that time, I thought about whether they are angle shooting, but I'm, you know what, you know, I don't really think he's a person who would do that. Uh, it's not like, uh, he, he seems to be having fun, and you know, I, I don't think he's doing that for angle shooting. Uh, Cause like, if I do check, they're gonna have to check anyway. Uh, so, you know, at the time, like there was some, you know, tells there. They said like, and then, when we bet like forty five, they actually raised to uh, the donkey actually raises to, uh, four hundred fifteen, so it's it's an over bet, right? So, um, at this point, like I definitely have a tough spot there, so, uh. Cause my strategy of like on the turn is that we're gonna bet a lot of ace x there. Let's say like at ace five of diamond, and um, we we're gonna check the flop for sure. We're not getting three streets of value, 
Um, but we gonna against like good players, we're gonna check the turn a ton because we need to protect our checking range. Uh, but against bad players, like we're gonna bet a lot of our ace x gonna because they're gonna call with a lot of worse hands, right? A lot of worse hands. So, uh, Jack ten off is actually one of the best hands that we can have here. Although, like ironically, it's because we we didn't you know we we are not playing a you know a correct strategy bef you know on early streets. Uh, so it's kind of to put us in a tough spot because like we our range is so capped at on the river, but then this hand is actually one of the best hands we can have. Um, so, uh, you know, w when I thought about that spot, especially like in live, right? So, uh, and then when he bets, when he raises, he's actually said, I think you are bluffing. So now it comes to me that a lot of people playing line poker, how, you know, the way they approach the game is that they make a lot of assumptions of other people. Uh, I think in this case, um, I do notice that this person would bet a lot of their uh, middle pair or bottom pair, like basically any pairs on early streets, uh, not worrying about like balancing at all, but like all uh, protecting the range, but like, they're gonna bet a lot of their pairs. So, like a lot of live players, when they have a pair, they just feel like they have the nuts and they have to bet there, um, leaving their check range like very vulnerable, right? So. When I bet the river, I think what his what's going through his mind is that I'm not betting the the flop. I'm not betting the turn, so I would never have a pair, a good pair there. So, uh, so on this, while the river shouldn't change anything, uh, even if I have three, I shouldn't bet there. So, I must be bluffing. That's what he said. Like you must be bluffing, right? So. And he immediately raises. So I think he just feels like I never have a hand there because uh, when people do, uh, even for like some good regs live, they make a lot of assumptions of you, uh, assuming you play the same way as them, right? So they are very, those are like very dangerous like assumptions, but a lot of people actually play poker that way because they don't, they don't play by the theory, but like more of like, do hand reading and making a lot of assumptions, uh, even if they are wrong. So like two things, right? So two things here. First, like he checked out of ten, so he would have he should not have a very strong hand unless like he's intentionally like angle shooting me, uh, which I don't think it's the case. And also like second is that um, you know he said like I must be bluffing, so he figured like I should never have a good pair there which I actually did. Uh, third, like, which is still most important, right? So we do have a strong hand here. Uh, when we are betting the river, uh, we do have, uh, you know, a second pair with a okay kicker. And especially when, have, when we have, when we have 10 here, um, we block the, uh, you know, the nuts here, right? We block, they're mainly, uh, you know, uh, value hand there, which is with which is like nine ten. Although like it, you know, I think the the value of the pair is better than the value of the broker because what, uh, as we discussed before, a line player always attempted, uh, you know, a low stakes line player they always tempted to bet their strong hands on earlier straights, right? I, like even a good player, they should never like they should really like checking they're nine, 10, uh, you know, not straight in position, uh, especially when there is flush draw there, right? So, or like a 10 or queen, uh, you know, a nine would kill the action. Uh, they, they should always, almost always bet there. So like, I don't expect them to have like nine, 10 at all. Uh, so we end up calling here. Uh, I think he showed like some racks, like, you know, which is like some nonsense. So when, when they play like this rules and like, uh, playing by their instincts, so like they're basically like lighting money on fire, right? So, uh, that's so that's like three interesting hands, and um, 
another kind of not interesting thing, so I'm not gonna sh share here with uh, Pokesnoy, but like I can talk about it. So, um, I open like Ace King off under the gun plus two and button three bets, uh, and a big blind and aggressive rag, uh, but which is supposed to be a bad rag, I think. Uh, he's just like giving the actions, but like not not really, like just like you know, kind of forcing the action there. So he's like cold for betting uh, 320. And I call it, at the button calls the flop, it's king seven four. So we have like, uh, there is a flush draw there, but like I'm not too worried because like it's four bet pot. Uh, I have an ace king there, I have top pair for top kicker. I check the flop and then the turn, you know, and it's another seven. So pretty dry board, like king seven four seven. So I bet there are two, two people forward. Uh, you know, the only thing I want to talk about that hand is actually the preflop. I think preflop, we should actually be uh, folding there because, uh, you know, line players, like, they don't, they just don't, like, three bet or four bet, like, bluff that often, right? And with ace, ace king off, we, and also, like, I'm particularly worried about the button three bet. Like, they could have, have a very strong range when they three bet the underground plus two open. So they could have aces, kings, uh, which had us crushed. Uh, and what if like I call the code for bet of like 320 and uh, the in position button uh, James, right? Like this is all like very tough spots and like um, which we and like we only have like eight dollars, thirty five dollars, like five, you know, uh, three big blinds in the pot. Like why we would did we uh, take those spots over the spots where we, we do have skill is there. So that's kind of a lesson to be learned, although like we end up winning the pot. Um, which is kind of always nice, but I think now I think of it like I think it should be fold. Um, so that's like um, the the uh, you know kind of three hands will play and uh, another you know another uh, um kind of a pre flop scenario I want to discuss. Um, okay, let's share another hand here. Um, so we actually, uh, let me see. So, uh, so it's all like two thousand dollar effect. So like we are always playing like 200 big blinds here. Uh, at this point, I think we are already up like almost 4k, um, and most of the donation from the same donkey, which is kind of nice. Um, uh, so, it, okay, this, this hand, so, under the gun, uh, uh, an old rag, you know, it's, it's not like to have, uh, stereotype or something, but usually they play tight and conservative, uh, especially in the United States, I think. <laughs> so, uh, when they raise, like, under the gun, uh, I expect them to have a very strong range there. Um, so... Actually, in this case, hijack calls. Um, hijack calls the open, and we were on the button of like having kings there. Um, so even against like, wait, even against a tight open, right? It's still a pretty good hand. Uh, some people might just flat there against like, you know. And old man uh, races underground, but like, um, especially with the color there, I, I, I still feel like three betting is the right play, uh, especially denying some equity from like uh, straddles, which like players usually, um, you know, call very loose. Um, so the underground opener four bets to 625. Um, and of course, like hijack folds in, um, you know, in theory, like we should always call there, all right? But um, I'm not too happy with the scenario because, um, because to be honest, like I don't expect people to fall, but like, especially, uh, you know, from, from this kind of line player field, uh, especially like he's a kind of an old rag. Um, so I expect him to have like just aces and kings, which um, 
would only have one combo, uh, and so it's gonna be one combo kings and like, uh, three combo aces. I maybe you know, ace king some of the time. I I really don't think like they're gonna play a queens that way. I think queens they're gonna just flat. Uh, so we end up calling here. Uh, I think if you do have a more solid read, I think you can advocate for. Uh, you know, uh. A fold there, but like, uh, in general, don't don't like you know take to that extreme, right? So, um, but then on the flop, so he had like a, around like one pot size left, so like thirteen hundred dollars, and he shoved the flop. So it's really a decision for me. Uh, actually, when I look at the spot later, it's actually closer to what I would expect. You know, from a serious perspective, you can see from the poker story, for sure we're gonna call here. Uh, we we're gonna have some ace queen, right? So, uh, even though like ace queen has better blockers, but like ace queen loses to kings. So, uh, you know, like so, I think still feel like kings is better here. Um, uh, we're gonna have some. Uh, we, uh, we we might have some jacks here. Uh, we might from time to time. We're gonna have our some queens ourselves. We're gonna some have some aces because like, uh, when we play that deep, not not that deep, but like when we play deep, and then uh, I tend not to have like too many five bets, so like I can have some like profitable four bet calls. So, like, for them like we can call queenster, we can call like ace queen suited uh, you know, so uh, we can call our aces or so, like, you know, kind of kind of keep our range wide instead of face up. Um, so we definitely have some aces here. Uh, I think it's a little close, very close, cause uh, uh, I think against like old rag, we're not gonna call the four bet with queens. Uh, and we're not gonna four bet a uh, three bet them and call the four bet with ace queen. We so our range is actually fairly narrow. It's gonna be ace king, uh, queens, aces and kings, right? So. We're gonna fold our ace kings for sure, uh, except maybe ace king of spades. Uh, for so for kings, I think it's a rather close decision. Uh, you know, considering all the reads about the player. Uh, now I think of it like a king of spades. We can fold like king of spades because if they ever gonna have a bluff here, it's gonna be like uh, most likely ace king of spades, right? So. While we actually block that, so now I think with spot like we we sh we should just fold there, but we end up calling and uh, uh for sure they have aces, but then uh we actually had a runner on the spades uh, uh and like it's actually ace of spades on the river so that like we we kind of um, kind of scooping the uh big pot there like four thousand dollar pot, so we are definitely running hot uh that in that session but like. Uh, kind of trying to analyze, uh, you know, you know the spot here, and you know and to see. Um, what's the um kind of correct play there? If I'm gonna play it again, I think I'm gonna pay more attention to the, uh, to to the to you know, uh, kind of put more efforts on like reading, the player field, uh, even though like, um. I tend to rely uh, mostly on uh, our, our, like kind of play fundamentally solid poker instead of like uh, you know just like reading the field but but still right like you know sometimes the information is just out there uh, we we should we should just take it. Um. Uh, let me look through my actually chat history to find if there are any other interesting hands because uh, like some some hands are like not interesting at all. I think, uh, after I'm uh, I was up like twelve k and like there was a lot of chips on the table, right? So I end up like, I think it's at ten k at that moment, and I end up going home and like you know grabbing bags so like I can carry the cash, sorry. And like when I came back, I have aces and like uh, a kings like flat me pre flop and like we end up getting in all the money by the river. So like, you know we we're attacking running hot there and like that's like. But that's a boring hand. It's like jack high board and like you know kings are just no way to, uh, no way to get away. Um and you know we we, we kind of get the maximum I, 
uh, max value there uh, on the river. Um, um, yeah, we have some other small hands, like we have ace, ace, queen, and we have not for sure where we have a lot of showdown value, so we kind of took the defense route where we check call two streets, uh, three streets actually, and we, we actually get a top, two top, top pair on the river. So uh, in general, like when in those spots, so I tend to not see betting a lot of my strong not flushes because like, let's say I have an ace queen high and I have a not flush draw. There are so many chances in rivers that we can just call, right? So, uh, and also we still have some showdown value. So we're gonna check uh, some of our not uh, flush draws so that, you know, um, uh, when we check, when we check call two streets, we still gonna have some flushes on the river, right? It's not like we always bet our flush draws, so like we're never gonna have a flush uh, when the flush gets there, um, when we check call, right? So while ace queen, uh, uh, you know, with the nut flush draw is the best hands to check call with, because, you know, first, like it has the most showdown value. Second, I like, uh, you don't worry too much about it, getting bluffed out of uh, on the river because like there are so many rivers you can confidently call like ace or queen we have a top pair and you know uh you know of course like you know if it's a if it's a you know a flush then uh, we have the nuts there um um another hand i think another hand like last hand i want to talk about is um you know how to extract like thing value from like live player field, right? So, um, uh, so I, I think it's still uh not not this one actually, um. It should be five ten instead of 20, 10, 20. Okay, not gonna have this. So, uh, first around two button, uh, who's a uh wreck, but uh. Uh, as I mentioned before, he's like somewhat aggressive, like forcing the actions, like love the actions, play, play, uh, play wine, but not like too crazy. Uh, you know, it's just like he's in general like having fun there. Uh, I actually like his personality. Uh, so he opens like forty. Um, and uh, I think I forgot like I'm in the small blind or the big blind. Uh, I think it's it's small blind, but like regardless. I in general play three bet or fold in those uh, small blinds and big blinds because like whenever there was straddle, especially when there was straddle, I play the big blind as the same way as I play small blind, right? Because it's essentially the small blind. Uh, because like we're gonna, by playing three bet or fold, we minimize our, you know, uh, uh, position disadvantage and like we also deny a lot of equity from the big blind or the straddle. Um, so here we have king queen off. Uh, I think it king, maybe it's king of diamond and uh, let's say queen of hearts. Uh, definitely a, way ahead of like his opening range. Uh, I don't think it's like uh, any needy that you know. Uh, so um, even like it's like a good player, right? So like it's a clear three bet uh, against but an open. Uh, so we raise it to like one sixty and uh, straddle folds and he called. Um, so uh, we heads up to the flop, and the flop was like uh, 10 of diamond, uh, 7 of diamond, and uh, 6 of hearts. Uh, it should be 6 of spades, sorry, uh, but it really shouldn't matter that much. Uh, so we see bets uh, 120. Uh, um, uh, now I think, of the, I think it's close. Uh, we have uh, second nut uh, backdoor flush draw and uh, we have a bunch of like backdoor straights. Uh, you know, in, in general, like I like putting a lot of pressure on people on those boards because like we still have a massive like range advantage there. When we they call, they have a lot of overcuts. Uh, a lot of their like long pair hands bricked. Um, of course, they're gonna have, they're gonna have seven, tens uh, and sixes. But we're gonna have those two. They're gonna have eight nine, but we're gonna have those two. We we're gonna play eight nine suited all the eight nine suited the same way, and they not gonna have like it's not like they're gonna have more nutty hands than we do, right? So we have the same amount of nutty hands, 
but then at the same time we have a massive range advantage simply because we can have aces kings queens and jacks which they really shouldn't have um so we bet like 120 there because like we still have a decent equity against like their continual range and uh a jack uh, you know if we turn a jack uh, then it will be open ender uh a nine would be a gut shot, uh, ace would be a gut shot too, and you know, a good card for us to barrel. A diamond, we're gonna have second not flush draw, and um, uh, and a king and queen, we, we're gonna have a top pair, right? So there are a lot of good things can happen uh, when we see bets and they call. So uh, unless like that's very aggressive, then I might consider check call, but like here, I'm just gonna bet small here and like not worry about like the they raise with like, you know, a lot of hands, right? Because like line players just don't raise bluff that often. Um, and then turn with like queen of, you know, um, I think it's the queen of club. No, I think it's like offsuit queen. Um, so we turn the top here. So um, against, a good, uh, I think as we still leaning towards betting here, uh, we saw ahead of the range, like they could have like some random 10s, like 10-9, 10-8, um, Jack-10, Ace-10, uh, you know, not worry about too much of like Queen queen here, especially when the only Queen-10 they're going to have is Queen-10 of uh, spades, right? So, because we brought the Queen here. So, uh, I think it's a crystal clear value bet. So, uh, we bet like 175 here. Um, uh, and they called. At this point, as I mentioned before, I don't expect line players to slow play their sets straight or um, <clears throat> or like, uh, you know, two pair that often. Uh, they are so scared of like, uh, kind of losing money here. Uh, and You know, actually at this point, we have like around 10K, so. But it really doesn't ma matter. They have a lot of money behind, so. Uh, and on the river, I think it's like a brick, right? So it's a brick. Uh, against a good player, we might be checking there because as I said, like a lot of times we not gonna get value from like, you know, worse hands. Um, and we, we might pick up a bluff from like a, a miss flush draw, a miss a straight draw where they decide, you know, kind of returning or even like some, some hands like I don't know. I think I think they might check check back Jack Ten there, but against that like a live player, um, I think it's a clear value bet, uh, cause like, realistically, as I said, like they're not gonna slow play, uh, their hand, like nearly often, right? So, we only worry about being behind of Ace Queen there, and, uh, which is like a sm very small portion of the range where they're gonna you can they're gonna fall back like it's queen pre flop like some of the time and also like uh they still have a lot of hands that we do beat uh they can have queen jack they can have or even queen queen nine maybe they play loose on the flop uh like queen nine diamonds queen nine spades right so um they can have you know some 10 like ace 10 um, King 10, uh, we might get a bit sing value there. So I end up like, and we also don't worry too much about being raised, even if we are playing deep. One of the problems of betting here, because we, we, you know, we play very deep, right? So they can bluff us out of the hand, but as I said, like people, you know, line plays, they just don't bluff that often, especially on the river, right? Like, especially, you know, using a race. So we don't, if like, if they do race, then, you know, like 99% of the time they do have a strong hand, so we can just comfortably fold, right? So like, but if we check, like they're gonna bet that strong hand anyway, and we're gonna call. So uh, we are, end up like losing same amount of money against like better hand. But then by betting, we actually gain more, you know, value from worse hands. For example, like if they have ace 10 there, king 10 there, Jack ten there, ten nine there, uh, or even like you know, uh, some like random queen like queen jack there. They just gonna check back the river, right? So they're not gonna bet. 
for seeing value themselves. So uh, we, we just lose a tons of value there, leaving money on the table. And, you know, and let's say, oh, let's say like if they have ace queen there, uh, then if we check, uh, they're gonna bet anyway, right? And then we're gonna call the same amount of money. Uh, why not just we betting? And like, if they have ace queen, they're gonna just call. So, you know, it's it's like against better hands, we're losing the same amount of money, right? So it's much better to bet when people are severely under buffing in those spots. So we bet late hundred, they they called, and when I show the high hand, like they mugged, I think. So he, he was saying like, you know, he feels like I play tight. Of course I play tighter than, you know, those live players who are spewy, but like, I, I definitely feel like I play looser than standard. Um, but then he feels like my, my three bet range is so narrow. He feels like he was like thinking loud when he making the reverse decision. He was like, oh, your three bet range is so strong. It's always, I only see aces, kings and like ace king, of course. Cause like, you know, I only play for like five hours or something, right? Like, and also like when I have ace five two and ace three bets, like, you know, I took it down the pot. So they don't see those showdowns. So, and also like they have all those assumptions, like people three bet the same range as they do. So they always feel like they can, you can have aces and kings and, uh, you know, ace king, and they feel they, you're gonna, but the problem of that is like, even if my range is that, I might gonna play all those hands the same way. Let's say I have aces and kings, I'm gonna triple barrel for sure. But if I have ace king there, would I actually should, triple barrel with my ace king there like you know it doesn't make too much sense sense to think that way but rather it's much better to actually look at the hand like uh, look at the range of like decide which to call with and which to fold with i think he uh I, when i showed him he mugged i think he, he you know considering like he's having a tough decision there i think he has a good 10 uh i would say uh, it's like ace 10 king 10 or jack 10 I don't, I don't think they ever gonna have a queen there. Uh, like with, with the queen, I'm pretty sure he's gonna snap call. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of a, a couple of interesting hands from the session. We end up like, up like 12,000. 12, so it's uh, actually uh, 1200 BBs, uh, you know, definitely a very good run, but it's such a variance, right? So a lot of live players overrate their skill edge because uh, they, you know, they end up like they used to win a lot of money during a short period of time. While we all know, like, you know, you know, the best we can do is like, even if you're crushing the game, uh, winning 10 bags per hour is insane after wreck. It's like cr total crushing the game. Like no one gonna sustain a much higher win rate over the long run because like variance is a big factor. Like, you know, when we are looking at my spots, it's just like I'm taking showdowns and like I'm, almost like winning all, like 90% of the showdown in that session while there will be sessions that were, I just simply cannot win showdowns at all. And like, I'm gonna get sucked out a, a bunch of time, get cooler a bunch of time. I actually end up like, uh, I had a very bad session like two, uh, like three weeks ago, I end up like losing $7,000 and like, it's not, cause like my bluffs never getting through and like I get cooler and sucked down and river. So like, you know, um, it's it's just variant but like uh but you know it, it's not my point my point although like the the title of the video is like you know some some were like showing off like you know winning that much money but like um but the, my my point is like just like uh, play fundamentally solid poker and making adjustments based on you, the your read on the field and as i said like not just like over generalizing their tendency, but more of like looking at, you know, uh, certain lines they are taking, what flaws they have uh, in their methods, like approaching the in their strategy and like how we can exploit them, right? So uh, that's like how I would approach line poker. And uh, I, you know, I spend most of the time online, but like I, I still play uh, live cash games from time to time. and. You know, so uh, hopefully we can we can share more hands in the future. Uh, hopefully I can you know get some equipment and like even do some vlogs and like if anyone is um you know interested. Uh, I'm I'm still learning learning. I'm still like I think there are still 
so many stuff I need to learn. I only until recently I'm looking into like uh you know a lot of spots where we should overbet and like you know when uh, what's the range distribution look like on different boards and like where we should polarize or merge on what range, etc. etc. Right. So, um, and also like have some uh, uh, interesting thoughts about like uh, recently uh, against like live player field. I think that's tips that you know, uh, which could be nice to have if you play live cash games. That a lot of live players when they do hand reading, right? They uh, when they are bluff, uh, I, I think a lot of supposed to be like good players or rather say uh, they think they are good. They do a lot of hand reading and like when they are bluff catching, what they do is like they look at how many draws that bricked. Uh, actually, even a lot of professionals do that. So uh, how to explore because and also like they have this like mentality of like um, if you have a top pair on the turn, and it's a brick river, you call the turn, you have to call the river. While well, the logic is totally flawed, right? Because uh, against such strategy, you can always like, let's say with value, you can always bet, bet, bet on a brick river because they always gonna call their entire range on the river. Uh, uh, but like when you are bluffing, you can always like, you know, bet, bet and like give up on the river, on a brick river, because like they always gonna call your bluff on the river if it's a brick. So, that um so so like by using that you know using that strategy against like line player field like they're gonna either over call the river means like they're gonna call all their top pairs on the turn and like they always gonna call on the river uh or they're gonna overfold on the turn right because like if they you bet 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 value so like they figured that out so they're gonna oh okay if i'm not gonna call the river i'm gonna fold the turn but you actually have to have a lot of bluffs on the turn, right? So uh, against the such strategy, like I think, uh, I guess people who do, um, you know, hand reading, uh, I think you can use like that strategy and like it's very valid. Uh, and also like, you know, uh, next time we, we can talk about over bets, like, but like I, I still struggle, struggle to have success in my poker using over bets, especially like when we're playing Shadow or let's say, Wonder Bigs, um, people are not folding enough, but uh, or like you know, I or maybe it's just variance and like I run into nuts like every time I bluff, um, but we can talk about that too. I don't, I don't think we get to a point where, uh, you know, you should never bluff, right? Like, uh, there are certain certain uh, uh I think it definitely like there are spots like people overfold. Uh, for example, like on a four to a flush, uh. You know, so um, board and on the river, and like I find I can over bluff a ton. I can turn a lot of my pairs into bluff, because like they just not gonna call enough. Even against small sizing, they always gonna be like, ah, uh, you get there. Like you must have a flush there, and they're gonna fold their two pair offsets, right? So, um, uh, there's still a lot to talk about, and uh, um, but like I think today we're just gonna go through this hands and. You know, next time maybe we can, you know, you, you know, do a lot of, do some editing and like make, make the video fancier, but like, uh, looking for feedback. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks guys. Should, uh, this is our session today. Thank you.